In this lesson, we're going to take a look at acids and bases. So as a recall from the last couple of years, properties of acids are they taste sour, they're corrosive with metals, they turn blue litmus paper red. When the phenolphthalein indicator is added, it remains colorless, and they react with active metals to displace hydrogen gas and neutralize basic solutions. Bases, on the other hand, taste bitter, they're corrosive with proteins, they turn red litmus paper blue. When the phenolphthalein indicator is added, it turns pink. They have a slippery or soapy feel, and they neutralize acidic solutions. And for a more comprehensive list, you can see page 377 in your textbook table 8.1 on there. So last year, we took a look at the Arrhenius definition of acids and bases, which was that acids have uh, hydrogen and they will dissociate or ionize into a hydrogen ion and bases have a hydroxide or an OH and they will dissociate into OH and whatever other uh, element is in that base. So examples are hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. So when we dissociate, we would have H plus and Cl minus hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide would dissociate into sodium ion and a hydroxide ion. So the first problem with that is that hydrogen ions actually do not exist on their own. What actually happens is they bond to a water molecule to create what is called a hydronium ion, so H3O+. The second problem with the Arrhenius definition is it doesn't explain why something like ammonia and H3 is basic, but it does not contain an OH. So the definition from before that we looked at was simply that bases had a hydroxide ion um, as part of them. And the third one, third problem is that that only works for aqueous solutions. So we're going to take a look at what is called the Bronsted-Lowry definition of acids and bases, and that will take care of the limitations of the Arrhenius definition. So this one sees the acid-base reaction as an equilibrium with a forward and reverse reaction, and the hydrogen ion, or just a proton, is transferred between two different molecules. And that can happen in non-aqueous reactions as well. So our definition is that acids have a hydrogen to donate and bases will accept a hydrogen. So for example, we see HCN, so that has an H which it could donate. So if it were to donate that, it would be left as a CN minus and ammonia, which is a base that can accept an H+, so if NH3 accepted an H+, it would become NH4+. So when we look at acid-base equilibrium, we have what are called conjugate pairs. So for example, hydrochloric acid, when that loses the H and becomes Cl-, then we have the acid because it has a hydrogen to donate and then the resulting chlorine ion would be called a conjugate base. So that would now be able to accept a hydrogen which makes it a base. Um, acetic acid and then acetate ion. So once again that is an acid because it has a hydrogen that it can donate and then the acetate ion, because it doesn't have the H there anymore and it would now be able to accept one, is a base, but in this pairing it would be called a conjugate base. And then we have ammonium and ammonia. So I have an H here, which makes this an acid that it can donate, and then ammonia, which now could accept an H, so that is the oops, conjugate base. And then nitric acid, so that has a hydrogen that it donates, and then that makes this a conjugate base. It would be able to accept a, uh, accept a hydrogen. So the only difference between our conjugate pairs 
is one proton or one H plus. So in our acid base equilibrium, I have uh, some base and some acid and then the hydrogen transfers from the acid to the base, which then on the product side of the equation makes what originally was the base, it now has a hydrogen, so this has now become the acid and we call it the conjugate acid. And then what was the acid has lost the hydrogen and it would now be able to accept a hydrogen, which makes it a base. So we would call this the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. And so our pairs are a base with a conjugate acid and then acid and conjugate base pairs. So that is looking at each of the molecules and then the resulting either gain or loss of a hydrogen to make up our pairs. So as we look at the dissociation of molecules in water, so we have ammonia and acetic acid that we're going to look at. So dissociation just means splitting into ions. So if I have ammonia in water, what's going to happen there? So ammonia is a base and our new definition of base is that it accepts a hydrogen. So Ammonia is going to accept a hydrogen um, H plus from the water, which is going to make it NH4 plus. And H2O now has one less hydrogen, which makes it OH, and it's lost an H plus, so it is now an OH minus. And then the next thing we're asked to do is identify and label conjugate acid and base pairs. So ammonia is a base, it accepted a hydrogen. Water, in this case, um, donated a hydrogen, so that makes it an acid. And then the ammonium ion now has a hydrogen ion that it would be able to donate, so that makes it a conjugate acid. And the hydroxide ion would now be able to accept a hydrogen, which makes it a conjugate base. So my base and conjugate acid pair and acid and conjugate base pair. And then acetic acid is CH3COOH. And as an acid, that is going to donate a hydrogen, which means we're going to lose that. We're going to be left with an acetate ion. And that means that the water is going to accept the hydrogen making that a hydronium. So acid because it donates a hydrogen, base because it accepts a hydrogen, and then now I have a conjugate base because it would be able to accept a hydrogen, and a conjugate acid because it now has a hydrogen that it could donate. And then my pairs, so acetic acid became acetate and water became hydronium. And we can see in this example that water can act as an acid or it can act as a base. So it's able to either accept or donate a hydrogen ion. Okay, strong acid. So we never really talked about the difference between concentrated and dilute or strong and weak a whole lot last year in grade 11. So we're gonna focus on strong acids today and then look at weak acids later on. So strong acids are acids that are over 99% dissociation, so splitting into its ions when it is in water. So with the exception of HF binary acid, so made up of hydrogen and one other element, those are strong acids, so hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, and hydroiodic acid, and those are all monoprotic because they have one proton. And then oxy acids are when the number of oxygens that are in a molecule ha is more than the number of hydrogens by at least two. So HNO3 nitric acid, I have one hydrogen and three oxygens. So I have two more oxygens than hydrogens. So that's an oxy acid. I have one and three again. So I have two more 
and H2SO4 once again, two more. So it can be three more, um, but it has to be at least two more oxygens than hydrogens. So nitric acid, chloric acid, and sulfuric acid are all examples. Nitric and chloric acid are both monoprotic because they have one hydrogen, whereas sulfuric acid is specifically diprotic, but uh, and more generally we call it polyprotic, just meaning that it has more than one hydrogen. Strong bases, now we're not gonna focus very much on bases uh, in this course, but similar to acids, so they have almost a 100% dissociation and any oxides or hydroxides of group one and two metals with the exception of beryllium are strong bases. Okay, we're gonna take a look at some calculations involving strong acids and bases. So calculate the concentration of hydronium ions in the following. So 0.45 molar uh, hydrochloric acid solution. So hydrochloric acid in water would dissociate and it's an acid, so it's going to donate a hydrogen, leaving us with hydronium ion. And in that balanced equation, we can see that we have a one-to-one -one ratio. So however many moles of hydrochloric acid I have is the same as my number of moles of hydronium that gets created, and there's no change in volume here. So my hydronium ion concentration here then is just equal to my hydrochloric acid concentration. Now, if over here I have a diprotic uh, acid, which means that there are two hydrogens for every single um, mole of sulfuric acid. But when I look at a dissociation, I only am going to look at the first hydrogen. So H2SO4 dissociating in water is going to leave me with HSO4 minus and H3O plus. So there's a certain KEQ, and we'll get into when we talk about weak acids, uh, KA, which is what we actually use for acids but similar idea to the equilibrium expression for KEQ. So over here, the, the equilibrium constant is different for the dissociation of the first hydrogen than it is for the hydrogen sulfate ion to then undergo another dissociation to become SO4 two minus and H3O. So we're just gonna focus on this first one. And so here, once again, we have a one-to-one -one ratio, which means my hydronium ion concentration is the same. Okay, when I have a dilution, what I can do from my volume and concentration is figure out how many moles of um, hydrobromic acid I have and then use my number of moles with the new volume to solve for the concentration. So I'm gonna have HBr would dissociate to become Br minus and H3O plus. So we have a one-to-one -one ratio there. So my number of moles of HBr from this solution is 0 0.750 times Remember, we need to convert to liters. So that is going to give us 0 0.03 moles. And when I add more water to that, my new volume is now 100 mils, but I still have the same number of moles of HBr, and that is going to translate to the same number of moles of H3O. So my H3O concentration is 0 0.03 moles per 0 0.100 liters, which is equal to 0 0.3 moles per liter.
Okay, and our last question is a neutralization reaction. So I have 35.8 mils of a 0.175 molar solution of nitric acid added to 70.8 mils of a 0 0.160, sorry, 0 0.0160 molar calcium hydroxide. So nitric acid and calcium hydroxide will react to make calcium nitrate, which when we do our crisscross gives us CaNO3 two. And I'm going to need two nitrates over here and that gives me two H's and two OH's, so two waters in total. So I can figure out how many moles I have of nitric acid from my volume and concentration. So number of moles equals concentration times volume. And converting to liters. And that gives us 0 0.00626 five moles. So that is for nitric acid and then for calcium hydroxide, same formula, concentration of 0 0.0160 and 0 0.0708 for the volume, which gives us 0 0.0011328 moles. <coughs> So what I know is in this amount of this concentration nitric acid, I have 0 0.00625 moles of nitric acid and then 70.8 mils of 0 0.016 molar calcium hydroxide. I'm going to have 0 0.0011328 moles of calcium hydroxide. What I also know from the balanced equation is that I need twice as many moles of nitric acid as I do calcium hydroxide. So that means that for this amount of nitric acid, so I need half the amount of calcium hydroxide. So if I divide that by two, I'm going to get 0 0.00 three one three two five moles and if I look I do not have that many moles of calcium hydroxide so that means that I don't have enough calcium hydroxide for this amount of nitric acid for this amount of calcium hydroxide, so for going from calcium hydroxide to nitric acid, I need twice as many moles. So to go from there to there, I'm gonna multiply by two, which means for this many moles of calcium hydroxide, I'm going to need that many moles of nitric acid and I have more than that so I am going to use up this much out of all of that nitric acid and I'm going to completely use up the calcium hydroxide so for this amount of calcium hydroxide I will use up that much nitric acid and be left with the difference so my number of moles of HNO3 is equal to 0 0.00625 minus 0 0.0022656 which is equal to 0 0.003609 so that's how many moles of nitric acid I have as excess that doesn't have any more calcium hydroxide to react with so that nitric acid is then going to dissociate in water to give us nitrate ion and a hydronium ion. And we have a one-to-one -one relationship there, which means that I'm going to have 
0 0.003609 moles of hydronium. So my concentration of hydronium is equal to my number of moles divided by my volume, which is a total of the two volumes that were added together, which converted into liters is 0 0.1066 liters. And that division gives me 0 0.0339 moles per liter. So over here, I first figured out how many moles of the acid and the base there were, then using the stoic from the balanced equation, figuring out the number of moles I would need for each of those amounts and getting rid of the one that wasn't possible. So figuring out which one is in excess and then doing a subtraction of the amount I have uh, and the amount that gets used up to figure out how many moles of the excess are left over. And then as a strong acid that goes through a full dissociation and based on the stoic here, I'm going to use my mole relationship then to figure out how many moles of hydronium there are. And then total volume uh, of the two different solutions, the acid and the base, for my volume over here. Practice questions to work on uh, from the old textbook. So there is a separate file, PDF or Word, whichever you prefer, in the hub. And they are also in this PowerPoint, but I think that they are more clear in the attachments in the hub.